Now, uh, let's turn our attention to the NFL. And uh, with the NFL, we're going to take a look at the games uh, coming up here this week. Uh, And there are some really good ones. But uh, let's talk about a couple that we have not yet talked about. Because, again, uh, keep this in mind. If you want to know a little bit more on the Houston-Minnesota game, check out uh, the Playbook Experts channel. Mark has a short that will be available there at some point posted in the next 24 hours. You can find out what he thinks about that game. If you want to find out what we thought about the Philadelphia New Orleans game, you could check out our show that we did on the Playbook Experts show, uh, uh, channel yesterday. That was our game of the week. So again, Philly, New Orleans, Houston, Minnesota, that's what you can find out over there. Here, let's talk about the LA Pittsburgh game because uh, just like Houston, Minnesota, this is a battle of 2-0 and teams, Mark. And boy, what a surprise, Mark. The Chargers are 2-0 and with Jim Harbaugh. What a surprise. Uh, this is what we talked about. Remember, we talked about the Chargers and the underachieving Chargers, and we keep picking them to do well. And then, lo and behold, Jim Harbaugh comes, and they're not underachieving anymore. They're just winning football games. And it might not be pretty. I mean, they don't have a great passing game, you know. And, uh, you know, at some points, you know, things don't look uh, exactly uh, like they're some juggernaut. But that's what well-coached teams do at this point of the season. They just win games. And that's what the Chargers are doing. And the Steelers are another well-coached team just winning games. They're not winning pretty games either. So, But this is the home opener for Pittsburgh. Uh, the Chargers uh, have won both of their games by a 49-13 to margin. Pittsburgh's won their games by a 31-16 margin. By the way, Pittsburgh just 6-9 and nine against the spread in the last 15 as a home favorite. Jim Harbaugh is 32-13 and 13 against the spread versus non-division opponents as an NFL head coach. Eight and two in that spot as a dog, which he is here as a one and a half point dog. And keep in mind, of course, he's coming off a win and a cover in that same spot uh, off of a much weaker team, Carolina, last week. So I'm taking the Chargers here. And and, and keep this in mind, the Chargers next week will be hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. So a big matchup on store for the Chargers, and I'm sure they would like nothing better to be 3-0 and when they take on the Chiefs, who also could be 3-0 and in that game. Pittsburgh, meanwhile, will be at the Colts next week. So what do you think about uh, this matchup, Pittsburgh and the Chargers? Well, my biggest reservation is your last comment, Greg, the fact that they're going to play Kansas City next week. And the reason I say that is in our database, our well-oiled machine, it tells us that football teams that have the Super Bowl champion on deck the next week really kind of tend to come flat largely because they're looking forward to a game like that. Now, this is an undefeated Jim Harbaugh football team who's not likely to come flat. Their excitement is still there. You know, you mentioned all those numbers in non-division games. He's 17-4 and four the spread on the road in those non-division games. So, you know, there's a lot of really, really good numbers here for the Chargers in this game. And you're talking about a 2-0 and Pittsburgh team that's been walloped in the stats this year. I mean, 2-0, and but they've been beat. 100 yards a game or better in both of their football games. Uh, that's winning games with smoke and mirrors, and I oh, do not like to. Now that you say that, I'm, I'm, let me open my playbook guide. I could have sworn there was something in there regarding that. So here it is. The Steelers were outgained in each of their first 10 games in 2023. Well, here we go. The, the, and the, the journey continues. <laughs> wow. Yes, it continues here, okay? Uh, they're also rotten against the AFC West, uh, especially against good AFC West teams, 0-4 against 700 better teams. Uh, and Pittsburgh, in their first home game of the season, which this is, last six years they've only won one of them and haven't didn't cover the spread in wow. any game. Okay. The Chargers are the better team. Harbaugh's got this team's attention here. And like you said, very quietly, he's doing what he did before when he was a head coach of the National Football League, and that is winning games. Uh, he's incredible. His National Football League record now fifty-three and twenty-two and one in the National Football League. That's Jim Harbaugh. I think they're going to very quietly make it to the NFL playoffs, and maybe, just maybe, you don't know what happens. Maybe even to the Super Bowl. And he hasn't had to steal signs either uh, to win a couple of games in the NFL. So that's right. working out for him. All right. Uh, the other game is Detroit and Arizona, and Detroit. Both teams are one and one. Detroit coming off the loss last week. Uh, and uh, how about those Buccaneers, baby? Uh, they just keep surprising everybody. But Detroit, this is an interesting spot, Mark, because, again, you thought there was a possibility that Detroit uh, could kind of come back to the pack this year. 
And I think this is one of those games that could tell us whether or not that could happen. Uh, getting off to a one and two start uh, if they do that. And, and how can you not be uh, real excited if you're Arizona fans, the way that they've started their season, they almost beat the Buffalo Bills on the road and they just demolished the LA Rams, a banged up team, but they demolished the Rams last week. So uh, what do you think about this uh, matchup in Arizona as Detroit is a three point favorite and Arizona's covered eight straight games as non-division NFC home dogs of more than two. Well, the way I look at this game, Garrett, Greg, is I look at it like uh, this is a wholesale value play to the Detroit Lions in the football contest. Detroit, I think, is a whole lot of value in a football game like this. Uh, and also, this is a key stat. I looked this up, and it took me a little time to do this, but I did the work. You look at Jared Goff, and he had a pretty bad football game last week. Uh, I think he had a 61.7 passer rating. And then you look at him in his career with Detroit, in his last – let me get this right because I put this in the newsletter – uh, in his, I think it's his last seven games, every passer rating when he's been below 70 has been 100 or better. And what does that tell you? It tells you he's going to bounce back to where Jared Goff has, has been before. A bad performance, a bounce, if you call it, okay, and a good comeback the following game. I see Jared Goff coming back, and I see Kyler Murray going down. I think Detroit's a big value play in this contest. All right. So, yeah, because Detroit's 5-1 uh, and one against the spread is a road favorite last year. It's a road opener. And um, I got to believe that that spread uh, – what was that spread, let's see, early on in the magazine at, uh, in Vegas? They gave Arizona – let's see, it was a four-point dog. So not much, only a point, uh, but definitely a value play for the Detroit Lions off of that loss, no question. And again, look if they're if they're the, if they're the team they were last year, then uh, and I just mentioned those stats as a road favorite last year, then uh, they're not going to start two and one. That uh, they know how important this game is. They're a more talented team than Arizona, and it's also tough for teams like Arizona to just keep putting these games back to back to back when they're just, you know, they're not there yet. So eventually, they're going to kind of uh, struggle and come back to the pack. If Detroit wins last week and Arizona doesn't, Greg, this game is six, okay? I agree. Okay, so there's value. And, again, I'm going to reiterate, Detroit more than doubled the yards on Tampa Bay last week, outstanded them 463 to 216. Yet they're they're being looked at as they lost a football game. Shame on you. Go on the road. And now you get them at a wholesale price. That's my take. And then the last game I just want to throw out there is that Baltimore-Dallas game because a lot of people thought, wow, you're going to get two – two and O teams and there's going to be a great game. And well, we've actually got two teams with one and three record. Uh, matter of fact, Baltimore is one and four straight up and against the spread in the last five games dating back to last year. Uh, the Cowboys under Mike McCarthy four and one against the spread as a home dog, which of course they're in that spot in this one. They play next week, uh, Thursday against the giants. And I'm going to let everybody know this early because it's a Thursday game. Okay. And we might not talk too much about this game next week. I'll mention it, trust me. But it might be too late for you to do anything. So I'm going to tell you now. Take the Cowboys against the Giants next week. Just take them. And that's because I've been taking them with this trend for like the last two years. And I think I, I'm either 7-1 or 8-0. No. The Cowboys are now 25-3 and three as division favorites against the spread of more than two. 25-3. Wow, and, and they just keep rocking that trend, but that's next week. So keep that in mind. As far as this week is concerned, uh, Baltimore, they've got a tough schedule. That's something we talked about at the beginning of the season. After this one, they play Buffalo at home, the Bengals on the road. So they better get some W's fast um, or else they could be in a lot of trouble. I think so, too. Uh, but you've also got a Baltimore team that loses their 0-3 on the football season. So where are you going to go here? Uh, I'm a little bit surprised at the line. I really thought Dallas would be the favorite in the contest. Uh, they come off a loss, and, you know, they're not going to want to lose two in a row at home, back-to-back -back home defeats. But the problem here with uh, making a case for Dallas against Baltimore is Lamar Jackson. If you take a look at Lamar Jackson in his career – when he's not favored by three or more points in a football game, he's 15-2-1 against the spread, meaning he's a real good short favorite or a dog. He's also 20-1 in his career against NFC teams, 20-1. and 
wins the football game. That's a big reason why Baltimore is the small favorite in this football game. There's no way on God's green earth that the Vegas odds makers were going to let Baltimore go out as an underdog in this game. Oh, yeah, I agree. Because they would have been buried by the Sharps with Baltimore, yeah. all the Baltimore money. But I'm going to give you something here that's going to be kind of unique to the show, and this really blew my mind. I'm looking at my database, my well-oiled machine, okay, and I go say, okay, let me look at how teams that were in playoffs last year that open up the season 0-2, okay, and what do they do as small favorites in game three? Well, when they're favored by three or less, those teams have been in that role 12 times. They've lost all 12 times straight up as a favorite. That's the role Baltimore wow. dresses up in this week. Yes, yes. So does it go to 13-0 and 0 or 0-13, or does Lamar Jackson put a halt to that streak? Some streak's going to break here, Greg, whether the NFC domination of Jackson or this, this uh, angle that I just mentioned to you. Something's going to go awry here in this in this game here. Put a gun to my head, I'm playing Baltimore in this game. I don't see the Ravens opening up 0-3. Yeah, I think this is one of the situations where if somebody were to put that proverbial gun to your head, who would you take? Uh, Baltimore. I yes. mean, that's the way it would go. And basically, Baltimore's in that spot because they're Rowan two. Yes. So, um, by the way, just keep this in mind, though. You mentioned that number because, again, that number, that 15, 2, and 1 number is right here in the magazine. Uh, but uh, they – and, and sometimes this is important because it's a new season. They did lose to the Chiefs as two-point dogs to start the season. So um, – Yeah, that, that's right. It wasn't updated off of the Chiefs loss. You're correct. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, because that's what I was looking at as well. I remember that one. I because that's a big stat. So I, so I know that the, Joe Mar Jackson has that that stat to him. And uh, when I when I remember about that, that is only a two point dog. I was like, oh well, I wonder if that's the start of that trend changing, or it's just hey, you know, it's just one of the losses, and the next six six will be wins. You know, because that's just his trend. Because that number is just so good that that's not going to change very often. He can't win them all, so. You know. you know, to me, it's like a horse, Greg, a good horse that uh, had a had a 15 and two angle working on it and it lost. I want to be first in line with that horse at the window that his next race. OK, sure. when he's when he's in that same particular situation. Yes, that's that's my thinking, like it is to a number like this in a situation. That's why, like when we've talked about and I mentioned this with the um, I forget which game uh, uh, we were just talking about, about the history. But the same thing that I've said with the Bengals, that. They're now 23 and 8 straight up, 23, 6 and 2 against the spread in their last 31 non division games. But they're 0 and 2 straight up this year, 1 and 1 against the spread, keeping in mind that they almost won last week on a 4th and 16 debacle. So, what we've talked about is, is that I just keep riding that Bengal deal because that's still been a positive. And yes, they just lost a couple, but it's the beginning of the season. And that's what they've done in the last several years. They lose in the beginning of the season. So I'm going to keep writing that. Now, look, if they lose to Washington or they lose the spread to Washington on Monday night, I, I got to start. Well, wait a second now. That that's uh, I maybe have to put a hold. But still, right now, you got to feel that. All right. Well, they've gotten the bad stuff out of the way. Maybe they're ready to keep writing the positive uh, uh, numbers because that that's goes a long way. That's 31 games we're talking about. It's not yes. just a small sample size. The other game I was talking about was the Dallas game that I referenced on Thursday night. I'm just going to keep riding the Cowboys and if for some reason they don't cover on Thursday night, I'm still going to ride the Cowboys in the in the in the division this year in that spot unless they lose more than once on the season. All right, before we go, uh, I have the two two questions for you in the NFL. Best bet options of the week for me. So I'm going to give you my five best bet options. Which do, which game do you like the most? I've got the Packers because, you know what, I think Jordan Love might play, and I want your opinion on that because he, there's still two-and-a-half-point dogs, even though Jordan Love practiced today. Uh, and 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 we're talking. It's Wednesday. I mean, it's Thursday. There's still a game practice tomorrow. And I think. Wait a second. I think he practiced yesterday. So we got to find out if he practiced today. Find out if he practices tomorrow. But I'm surprised that number has not changed yet after he practiced. Anyway, I like the Packers. I like the Chargers. I like Vegas, the Saints, and the Bucks. And by the way, with Vegas. I really like Vegas. I'm, I, the only thing I'm a little bit concerned with with Vegas is the backup role deal that we've always talked about. Andy Dalton playing the, the, the number two role starting this week. Uh, same thing with Skylar Thompson, which is why I think the Dolphins are going to be a dangerous team this week as well. I think the Dolphins could be a nice play. 
But um, but you know what? With Carolina, is that uh, should should it really matter how bad they are? Who the number two? Who the who the next guy up is? I don't think so. And also, I thought that spread should have been a lot bigger to begin with. Anyway, I was shocked that the spread was only seven. I thought that spread should have been twelve, and now the spread's down to five because of Andy Dalton. So I don't buy it. Anyway, those are my five teams. Who do you like the best? You said it. Uh, our power ratings in our playbook football newsletter are second to none, and the reason they're second to none is a, a professional uh, odds maker named Kenny White supplies us with his ratings. Kenny has set the lines in Vegas for the longest period of time, and when I saw his numbers when he sent them over to me Sunday or Monday Monday morning, uh, a note that he made on Carolina is the fact that uh, a line adjustment Carolina is two points better without. Young, without Bryce Young, a quarterback. From seven to five. Yes. Okay. Two points. And that's exactly what it was. Two yep. points. You know, the move there. Uh, my concern here uh, in these football games is Tampa Bay is on the reverse end of what I talked about Detroit. Uh, here's the football team that has really gotten off to a really good start. And I think they're going to pay the price in a situation like this. Uh, it's eventually going to catch up with them. They're nothing special, but then all of a sudden they're being looked at like they're something special. Baker Mayfield is horrible as a home favorite. Uh, I'm going to avoid them like the plague this week. And on your best bet list, this and Green Bay, by the way, here's my thought here of why we're going to see Malik Willis behind center okay. in this football game. Number one, you, you're Green Bay, you're a playoff team. Your quarterback's beat up. He's probably – so so close to being on the injured reserve, but all of a sudden he makes this dramatic turnaround. You're playing Tennessee. You can you can go out there and likely beat this football team with your backup quarterback. Why would you risk putting him in harm's way? I and number, agree. Number two, I agree with that. Sure. And number two, it's Malik Willis, a former Tennessee Titan, yep. going up against the team that gave up on him. Okay. Yep. So that's the reason I think we'll see Malik Willis, a quarterback for Green Bay this week. Uh, so which one of those five do you like the most? Out of your, would it be the Chargers? Because you yes, didn't say that it you would like be the them, Chargers. So. It would, yes, okay. for sure. All right, and then the last one is which of the two? If I only have two upset options this week, and there's not usually a lot in the NFL. Jacksonville two to one over Buffalo. Miami one sixty five over Seattle. Again, you got Miami with a backup quarterback first game. I think that could definitely give them a little bit of a jolt. Seattle has not really been a very good home favorite team over the last several years, and with Jacksonville, uh, they're a desperate team. Uh, they need a W. Uh, so uh, I, I can kind of see how that desperation might work in their favor because they're still a talented football team and they're getting two to one. So, um, so the, and, and by the way, I was thinking about the Giants uh, only because of the fact that they actually played better than the result uh, indicated last week. And uh, Cleveland, I'm still just not, you know, they, 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 last week they should have won that game going away. And they made Jack, they actually had to sweat that game out, as you know, as a Browns fan. That game should have been over a long time ago, but yeah, more realistically, uh, Jacksonville, Miami. Do you, do, which one would you go with uh, over the other? Well, remember, uh, they're still the Giants. Okay. Oh yeah, that's why. That's why I just couldn't. Do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Yeah. So, regardless of what costume they dress up or what disguise they look, they're yeah. still the Giants. And by uh, the way, we both like Cleveland a lot this year, and if they lose to the Giants, that wager is in big trouble. Yeah, it, we can almost burn the ticket up, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, of these two games you have here, I'm going to side with Miami uh, for a couple of reasons here. Number one, Buffalo is in a great role this week. Undefeated teams are at, at home on Monday nights do really, really well. And I don't see that Buffalo bit having the rug pulled out on them. Uh, they're sort of one of these better, really better teams in the NFL that's oh, yeah. not getting a lot of respect. But the Miami play here, I love the rally around the with the backup quarterback situation going on here. Uh, and if you look at Miami, what they've done this year, there's only three teams in the NFL that rank in the top 10, both offensively and defensively, and Miami is one of them. Now, that top 10 offensive number was put up largely with stats by Tua, I sure. agree, but it's the defense that will carry the role for this football team here, and I think they'll rally around Skylar Thompson this week. Yeah, I can see them rallying around Skylar Thompson. I don't see Carolina rallying around Andy Dalton. And, and you know what? <laughs> Las Vegas is a lot better than people think. Uh, I had a good conversation with Hondo Carpenter, who covers the team, and uh, he's very high on the Raiders this season. Uh, did not get off to a good start, but you know what? That's a good Chargers team. 
and they played pretty well. Gardner Minshew did not have a good game, but they looked a lot better. Boy, did they look good. Max Crosby is a menace, and that team just ate up that very inexperienced offensive line in the interior of the Ravens, and that could be a big problem for the Ravens all season. But Max Crosby is a beast, and uh, I just think the Raiders are, are, are a sleeper team. He's and, got Wilkins uh, playing alongside of him. That's and real that is Wilkins playing alongside of him. Yep. Yes. That is a very underrated team, the Raiders. Keep an eye on them. So that's why I think a five-point favorite over Carolina at home, to me, is a slap in the proverbial face of the of the Las Vegas Raiders. So, all right. So that's going to wrap it up, Mark. Uh, any closing thoughts, including uh, the uh, the way that everybody can check out the newsletter that is available right now? Well, the newsletter is doing really rather quite well, Greg, out of the gate to start, uh, really on five-star best bets. We've cashed four out of five. You can pick up a copy just in time for the weekend at playbooksports.com. And when you do, you also get free on me the weekly coffee or the daily coffee club in your e-box every day from now through the Super Bowl. And it's really a great daily read. It's something that I have in your in your e-box at 6 a.m. every morning. It's my overview of what's going on on the sporting scene that day. Free bonus when you get the Playbook Football Newsletter through the Super Bowl at playbooksports.com. 